me do this in half. You drink it in the daytime. No, I don't drink a lot, but I always do a like a little shot before every episode. But one of my co-hosts, here you go. Salud. Oh, okay. So I just took a shot with Rose RPA because we're starting off this episode with Jason. Are you filming already? Mm-hmm. We're starting off this episode with Jason. Wait, Lee. no intro. That's it. Just, mm-hmm. just let's go. You just walk in on a conversation. Oh. First of all, you look very moisturized. Thank you. I feel like you had a facial. No. Really? No. Yeah, I need to talk about who your esthetician is. Uh, Derm King. Yeah, because you don't have any pores, friend. I'm looking right at you. Derm King, black owned, black operated. I love that. Let me put on my Fenty Skin lip balm that Rihanna sent me. You yes, know I what? dropped the name and we just started. <laughs> yes, I did. She sent it this morning. We are doing the first name trop of, of the episode. There'll the be- only name, Rihanna. <laughs> did I, I say mean, Rihanna? Did you hear me? Rihanna. Okay. Mm-hmm. Did yeah. that come out of her purse and she just handed it to you? That came straight from her, damn um, I don't know. She just texted me yesterday and said she was sending me a package. And I got a, a large package from her today. The Fenty Skin. The one that all of you are mad you can't get got sent to me by Rihanna. <laughs> I'm just saying, Jason, that if Rihanna's looking for a plus-size model I of, mean, a, of a certain she age. She did tell me that I could... Uh, help in the casting of the next um, Fenty Savage Fenty campaign. Jason, if my big nobody beautiful knows ass- this. I'm telling you, I, I'm, I'm, I, this is exclu- <laughs> um, Jason Lee unlocked today. I love this. By the way, um, people always make fun of me about how much I love you, like out loud in public. Because people want you to hate me. They really do. Mm, but to know me is to love me. And you know what it is, though. Or, or hate me. You're a Leo, and I always say this: when Leos trust you, you get a different version of them. Yeah. Because you guys are ruled by the heart. And if we don't trust you, we will eat you alive. If you don't trust somebody, then then they they have reason to be scared. But the thing I love about you is you taught me discernment. Really. When I first moved to LA, because I moved to LA in 2019. We met March 7th, 2020. Mm. You guys hear that date? March 7th, 2020, the World Health Organization announced COVID on March 11th. So you were the last person in my home before COVID. March 7th, that's the uh, year of the Pisces. Is that the Pisces, right? I think that is Pisces. Well, you know, Rihanna. Oh, that's true. (laughs) Wait a minute. Did you find another way to bring Rihanna? Rihanna is a Pisces. Well, you know what's so funny? I watched that video back. In the video, we were both talking about how much we were in love with Rihanna. Mm, And look at where we are today. Now you're besties with her, and I'm trying to get on a campaign. I'm not (laughs) only besties. I'm putting on (laughs) Fenty Skin by Rihanna. Okay, so I have a question, though, right? (laughs) The thing about having so many people of stature and influence who trust you, how do you discern... What is sacred and what can be shared? Because that's been tricky for me, and I've been watching you, and you've taught mm-hmm. me a lot. Well, I think there's moments that you share with people when you know those moments are just for you, and then there's moments that you share with people that you feel inspired by, so you want to inspire others. So I kind of use, um, I use that as my uh, my compass when I do that. For example, like me and Rihanna talked for two hours on Facetime the other oh day. Oh my God, this I ain't gonna tell you what we <laughs> talked about. In fact, you you won't even know them. Uh, uh, and uh, two minutes of it but in it what we were talking about I could talk about the spirit of our conversation it was really about how we continue to use our God-given uh, blessings to inspire other people mm-hmm. you know she's a super mega star iconic brand culture music fashion just a woman who also in private spaces is a very vulnerable human being who is grateful where she came from and what she's come through and who she's become. And she's so grounded and uh, meticulous about having her finger on the pulse of culture and life and women and gay. And, and, and she's just an amazing human being. And it's not just because she's Rihanna. What I love is that I can see her as a human being. I don't see her. I mean, of course, I know who I'm on the phone with. Yeah. Fenty skin by Rihanna. You know <laughs> Do you smell me today? You smell amazing. I smell, I have on Fenty by Rihanna. Really? Okay, yes. I'm going to hug you a little harder. I didn't yes. hug you because I was sitting. We're going to hug because I want some of it to transfer but, on but me. But when you look, but, but people that don't know me, of course, there's all these narratives out there about me. There's all these things people believe about me. You know, uh, there's so many things. And I laugh because when I meet people, they're like, oh, my God, you're you're this. Or, oh, my God, they, they have their Why own. Why are you so re- nice? They have their own revelation. But what I love is that they're identifying with the fact that they're uh, life has been driven by uh, being told or fed what to do and what to believe. I don't live that way. I believe I connect with all these people because I just am showing up as my true authentic self, whereas I think a lot of other people don't. I think a part of what makes you authentic is your upbringing because I feel like the way that we bonded was when I read your book. Mm. The minute I read your book, I was like, oh, we have a similar childhood. I feel connected to him. And I feel like a lot of the celebrities that you have connected with are people who know what it's like to struggle 
And so they're extra grateful when their blessings come. Mm -hmm. It feels like even when I think about your relationship with Rihanna, with Cardi, even with Floyd, it seems like that seems to be that human aspect mm -hmm. that people are really grasping onto you for. Do you ever sometimes... Don't forget Tiffany Haddish now. Tiffany. When we talk that's about the, the foster the care real, system with you and Tiffany, I start crying. That's the real one right there. That's yeah. The, that's and you've been a great friend to her. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the things I wanted to ask, like, how do you navigate allegiances, right? Because, perfect example, Jason Lee, your show on Revolt mm. did numbers. Mm. I have friends who worked there, did numbers. It's doing bigger numbers now on Hollywood Unlocked. Really? Right, like, so. you were pushing out numbers, okay? Yeah. And so, when Scandal hits, my first thought is, oh no, Jason is singing, standing two steps, steps away from so-and-so. How's he going to handle it? And I always go to your page, you are so unbothered. Because... You are so unbothered. Because I've said this many times, Cancel culture rents space free in the minds of black people because it affects us the most. Mm -hmm. uh, people who live in privilege, predominantly white people with white privilege, don't fear cancel culture because like- They can't be canceled, child. And they can, if they do get canceled, they can write right over, go right across the street and get another opportunity. Whereas we're in fear of losing everything because we don't understand that we are the hot sauce and can create our own opportunity. We don't need handouts. We don't need blessings or gifts from anybody else. We just got to activate our own passions and like stay locked into our vision. So for me, whenever they come for anybody that I have a real genuine relationship with, I just go ahead and post how much I love them. Because what you I've noticed do, that. Yeah, you can't <laughs> because I'm a real one. Yeah. Now you're they right. all have now now not everybody has done that for me, and that's okay, but the ones that I'm close to have. Does that ever hurt your feelings when you realize that you're writing harder for someone than they are for you? No, because my mom put me in foster care. So if my mother put me in foster care, and my brother got me shot, and my father didn't come get me out of foster care. All the people that was supposed to uh, be there for me weren't. Why am I going to worry about somebody that I don't plan to be in their life forever? They may not be in mine. You know, yeah. one lesson I've learned over the years with self-love and my journey and becoming an adult um, is that I used to uh, be upset when friendships didn't work out because I, I felt like, well, let me back up. When friendships didn't work out and I ended friendships, it was always because we had a major falling out. Whereas now I'm old enough to realize that friendships and relationships in general can just naturally expire without there being a beef. Mm -hmm. That if we just don't hang out anymore or we just don't talk anymore or we never see each other again or spend a moment, no matter how many moments we've spent, it's just because that relationship is expired. It's like a yeah. job. I can leave a job whenever I want to leave the job when that job no longer fulfills me. Now that I'm adult and I realize like, oh, every relationship I have doesn't have to end in a beef or a death because they can expire when it just doesn't fill me up anymore. Yeah. Oh, yeah. When I got that moment, that aha, I went through every relationship I had, every space. And even now, 2024, baby, when you thought y'all could call me before, I'm not even taking calls now because now I know that every minute that I spend has to be something that pushes all of my goals forward. Jason, you're talking about what, what they call an ego death, which you're talking about. It's oh, called really? an ego death. Yeah, when you let go of how you're used to seeing yourself and you start to look at things objectively and not taking things so personal, it's because your ego is dying off and making yeah. room for something new. Yeah. I always think it's so funny that people are like, you're an emotional intelligence coach. How do you love Jason Lee? And I'm like, y'all don't understand that under the persona, you have a lot more emotional intelligence than people give you credit for. Does that ever annoy you, though? No. Or do you I, lean I, into it? I lean, well, lean into what people think people, or feel. People, people underestimating your emotional intelligence. Well, everybody has never been as connected to the higher power that I am, so they wouldn't understand the frequency in which I function on. So I look at it like that's God's protection for me. When people are afraid to get close to me because of what they heard, that's, that's the fact that you're not strong enough. You have not been given the depth enough. You've not been given the, the, the courage enough to even entertain the energy I'm going to give you. Because my yeah. energy is intense. Everything I do, the <laughs> level of intensity in which I operate, my team was like, damn. But you know what? That's that passion, that drive, that ambition that I think a lot of people lack because they're so distracted by all these other things. And I wake up every day and decide what direction I want to go in my life. One day I woke up and said, and I know we're going to get to it, I want to run for city council. Yep, we're definitely and, getting into that. And, and, and I'll tell you, all the people, how are you going to do that? He spills the tea. He's, he's messy. Politics are messier than that. Politics is just ugly Hollywood. D.C. is just a, a less attractive version of Hollywood. If I've lived them both. If I read an email that I got from the White House, you would have thought I got that from... VH1. <laughs> love and Hip Hop. Yeah. But it is what it is because I feel like God has prepared me for every room I walk in, every every culture that I'm a part of, that like I've already had the experiences that prepared me to be great in it. I, I 
navigate well and thrive in confrontation. I can deal with conflict. I can uh, speak to the presidents of the world, but I can also roll around with pigs. I'm fine with what I can, uh, what do you call it, uh, code switch at any moment. Yeah, you're and, a shapeshifter and, yeah, and, and a manifester. And I think that's a skill. So, yeah, I've perfected it. Well, you know where that comes from, though, right? It comes from trusting yourself. I tell people all the time the reason why I can take a risk is because I trust myself. So even mm -hmm. if the risk doesn't work out, I trust the person who's bouncing back. Period. When you know you trust yourself, you can be like, all right, let's see where this goes. Because if you act funny, I trust me to get out of it. Period. Now, before we talk about uh, Stockton, because mm -hmm. I really want to talk about you in politics. I love it. That is going to be a conversation. I want to push back a little bit towards burnout. Uh -huh. Because this is January. Everybody and their mother is going to be making news resolutions. Like, I want to save the world and start eight LLCs by February 1st, right? Mm -hmm. And then by, I, by, by March 1st, they all be closed down. Closed down and no longer going to the gym, yeah. right? Like the, the, the treadmill is now covered with clothes. But one of the things that I remember watching was there was a moment, I think it would be a year or two ago, two years ago, when Kanye had just come on the scene. All these people were coming at you. The visibility, the, the pressure was pressuring, friend. I was there up close. And I was like, this is not sustainable and by the time you came to damage and i and we're like i think i'm burnt out i was so relieved because i was about to do an intervention like mm. can somebody just make him go to sleep mm. can we just make him take a nap how do you now because a lot of people are watching you who are inspired by you whether they want to admit it or not how do you now that you're getting all these yeses the season of yes mm. how do you say no thank you when you're constantly being given all these opportunities that you might not have the bandwidth for? Mm -hmm. How do you make sure that burnout doesn't happen to you again? Well, first of all, this is a Kanye designed uh, Yeezy Gap jacket that never got released. Second name drop. Um, <laughs> yes, I did one perk of working with Kanye West is I got the whole brand, uh, the, whole, the whole line. Um, I mean, I, I'm getting just as much, if not more, opportunities now as I was then, mm -hmm. I just don't feel like I'm in a race anymore. Like I felt like I was in a race, not with people, but just within myself to accomplish so much. You know, you get a call from Kanye West, regardless of what you think about him, to, you know, to be the head of media and partnerships. I mean, it's a big opportunity. It's a huge opportunity. So I took it and I took it on my own terms. Mm -hmm. I told him what I stand for. I stand for pro-life. So a woman's right to choose whatever they want. That's that's their choice. I'm pro-gay, LGBT, trans, whatever they want to do. I, don't, I, I live with the idea that I don't care what other people are doing with their lives as long as it doesn't affect what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. It is real simple, right? I'm, I'm pro-black, uh, Black Lives Matter, as you all know. And um, pro protect black women as well, because this is always listen, calling y'all out. Listen, on that. I protect black women, I, but I look. I also believe that whether you're a black woman, trans woman, white woman, Asian woman, pink woman, brown polka dot woman, gay, trans, black, white, fat, skinny, thick, dumb, smart, handicapped, two legs, one legs, three legs. Some of y'all hate y'all three leggers. <laughs> I mean, y'all can get it. Everybody yeah. can. Get, I'm an equal opportunity offender. But when it came to taking that opportunity to work with Yay. I did it on my own terms. I want to be paid seven figures. And I want to be paid one time. I don't want to get paid monthly like everybody else. I don't want to chase bills. I want you to send me a wire right now, seven figures, one time, non refundable. So Ooh. if you, you decide to do whatever you decide to do, and he did Wait, all that. You Wait. pulled a non refundable on Kanye West? Absolutely. And he, and he gave me everything I asked for. So when I see people online saying Kanye fired him because he stole money, Kanye fired him because this kind of. I walked away when I believed that I no longer aligned with where he wanted to go, but he called me and told me where he wanted to go and told me he respected me enough to let me leave if I was ready to. So it was an amicable, and he told me how much he respected me. I mean, Kanye treated me better than he treated, and I'll be honest, he treated me better than he treated a lot of people that worked with him. And I think that's because we had a conversation about respect and to the extent that even when I thought he was unhealthy and mm. gaining weight and not taking care of himself, I would schedule my doctor's appointments. And I never talked about this. I would schedule my doctor's appointments in his hotel room. So when my doctor comes to take my blood and do my micronutrient test or my NADs or my vitamin drips, he got them too. Wow. And so part of me being his head of media was also being a friend because I wanted him to be healthy. I wanted him. So he would say, well, what, what you doing over there? Micronutrient test, bro. Let me explain to it. Broke it down to him. Well, what you doing over this? Getting a vitamin therapy because, you know, oh, I'm doing stem cell. Kanye sat down in one day in that hotel and did everything I did in one blood draws, vitamin drips, NAD. He did all in one. That's amazing. And by the way, that's how you know you have somebody who actually cares about you as a person. Yeah. I was surprised when we did the Black Future Brunch about how open 
you and Ye made the room for people to speak their mind. Because mm. I'm thinking, okay, it's about to be Kanye and Jason. That's a lot of personalities. That's, lo- that's a lot of, two of them. <laughs> yeah. The two of them alone. And then you had everybody from, every black person from a major platform that ever existed was there. The Wasn't ghost, that a beautiful event? It was gorgeous. Mm. It was, and I, mind you, of course, I was the last one to slip into my seat just as I was about to get started. Because I showed up in a Kente dress. I didn't read the part where it said all black. Mm. So I had to go home and change out of my Kente dress. I sit down. I see everybody talking. It was gorgeous. You guys were beaming. The sunbeams were like... But then there was a moment. What can I say something about sunbeams? Uh huh. Was that intentional? Kanye hired somebody who manages where the light is. So I knew that was intentional. So the time of the brunch, remember it was a little delayed. Yes. He delayed it because he knew the time that the light would be shining through those. Those holes in the sky. I knew it. It was very intentional. He was intentional about the lighting. He wanted the vibe. He wanted us all to be able to look at each other. You know, he put a lot of heart into that event. Now, we got in a big fight about what we called the event. He talked about it at the event because, you know, I wasn't a pushover for him and he wouldn't let me push him over. But we would go back and forth creatively because I would say, nah, bro, that's whack. You know, to tell Kanye West. That he's whack to his face. (laughs) But he would call, nah, bro, you whacked it, you know. But it was out of love of wanting it to be better. That's why I enjoyed I don't regret working with that man. He is a brilliant genius that gets in his way just like I have, you know, uh, in many times we all have. But, you know, we all suffer from different things and have gone through different things. And he was also being gaslit and attacked by Pete Davidson all the time. You know, and Kim Kardashian, the family was just doing working overtime to try to break him mentally. And he played into it and he allowed it to happen. But, you know, that that future brunch is probably one of my most proudest creations because of what we felt when we were in the room the exchange of powerful thoughts from black leaders thought leaders from everywhere from vanity fair variety in essence to your platform my platform youtubers you know he we really curated a room meta we created a curated a room of black minds who were speaking from the spirit about controlling our narrative which was the theme and you know to go from that to see what it evolved into was the most disappointing experience of my life because I really got behind somebody who I thought was ready to lead the culture. And, you know, unfortunately, it didn't go that way for too long. Growth isn't linear. I think that's what that experience taught me because, like you said, you can't fake the vibe that was in that room. And I remember at one point, yeah, he said something controversial. You guys gave me the mic. I said my thoughts. He received it beautifully. And I was like, wait a minute, Kanye is taking feedback? Like, it was almost like a, a sliver of time where being around you opened his heart. Mm-hmm. To like listen and feel like he could trust people, and which is why when we saw what happened afterwards, I was so heartbroken. Mm-hmm. But I do know what it's like when you're dealing with you're battling your demons. People are gaslighting you, like you said, and you're using mm-hmm. the word gaslight correctly. Mm-hmm. Um, it is psychological warfare. Mm-hmm. Being in this industry will have you questioning who you are if you're not already clear to begin with. I think you're really well built for that. This is a great segue, Jason, because as someone who's been evolving, and as someone who I'm still me though. You're, you're, you're still, you, evolution just means a better version of who's already there. Right. And, but no, but, but I mind fucked everybody. Everybody's been, all of you been fooled. Cause this is who I've always been. Yeah. Charleston White recently did an interview where. Now he's a brilliant troll. He, he is brilliant. Is brilliant. Mm-hmm. And I can't wait till he comes on my show. But he recently talked about how he had to dumb down himself for you niggas <laughs> to be able to receive his and to go viral this and that and when yeah. when i heard him talking it was highly intelligent and i'm telling you that this is so the jason that you saw in a lot of the content that you've seen over the years is that the jason that was working in education with kids is that the jason that was working in juvenile probation is that the jason that was leading the union for 11 years is that the jason that led the trayvon martin campaign no When Jason got into media and couldn't find a door opening for him, he opened his own door, he built his own table, and he created a lane that he knew would go viral, that would be sticky, that would make people talk about it. And that's the Jason that they got. Now, as I evolve, they're like, yo, you're evolving into this new person. No, I'm I'm evolving backwards. Yeah. Because you couldn't handle, you wouldn't give that other guy an opportunity. I just did a toy drive where I gave 3,000 kids and their families free gifts, free food, uh, food bank to give them groceries, haircuts, um, and now all that for Christmas. And Tiffany came in and took photos with everybody as Miss Claus. Do you think that went viral? It didn't? No. I liked it. Mm-mm. Because it's good news, and good news doesn't go viral. No, because when you're black, the only thing that you really care about these days are things that cannibalize your own. And the culture's in critical condition because we're doing all the work now. You know, we don't need to be canceled. We'll cancel ourselves before anybody else. And, you know, the sad part is we don't know how to collaborate like everybody else. I don't care. 
Rihanna. Not the Fenty. The Fenty's back. Because if you're but watching it visually. <laughs> but why I love her so much is she don't got to talk to me. She doesn't. She don't have to connect to me. We don't have to FaceTime for two hours. She don't have to trust me to give me the photos of her child uh, to share with the world before anybody else. She chose me. So I gravitate now to the people that see me. Mm -hmm. Not the people that see my antics or see my commentary or whatever. You know, because... They've tried me so many times for the things that I've done. You know, I say Jennifer Hudson's illiterate. Oh, my God, he attacked a black woman. <laughs> well, Howard Stern said, Howard Stern sexualized all the dead kids at Columbine the day after the school shooting. He got a $100 million deal at uh, wherever he's at. So yeah. I'm just saying, like, you know, but again, I think wokeness is not something that our culture has really right now because we're too busy vaping and TikToking. But, you know. One day people will look back on it in history and when it's all said and done, I'll be the most powerful person in independent media. I'll be the most wealthiest person in independent media. I'm already at 50 million. Next year I'll be at 100 million. 50 M's, y'all. 50 M's. Yeah. I would be, love it if I had maybe a keep tenth of that. Keep on hating. You know what you're making me realize, though, is what you're talking about is how crabs in a barrel has been cultivated and gone digital. The, the way that they used to do it with the field slaves and the house slaves, now they're doing it with gender wars. Speak they're doing it with it. class wars. Mm -hmm. Like, they're doing all the old antics of the fake. By, God, by the way, guys, the Willie Lynch letter is fake, but the, the narrative that it's teaching us is real, right? Mm -hmm. So the whole Willie really Lynch thing of divide and conquer, it's gone TikTok. It's mm -hmm. gone Instagram. And it's interesting because now when I'm dating, I'm actually meeting men who are like, oh, women still like us? They, when, it, when did we stop? Hey, stop, stop, stop liking you guys. But social media has convinced them that. Racism though. has been institutionalized in everything. That yeah. crab in the barrel mentality, there can only be one. There can only be one. There can only be one. When you get one, you got enough. When you get one, you, you know, that's, in, that's woven into everything. That is why I chose, when I finally built up the courage to get into entertainment, I chose independence from the beginning. I launched my own company in 2015. From day one, I've owned myself. I've written every one of my own checks. Yes, I've had partnerships and jobs and other things. You I've, have to to level up, yeah. Yeah, but I've le that's leveraging. Yeah. You know, that's that's not because I needed to Wendy Williams. I was a Wendy Williams fanatic, fan, became a friend, and then became a regular friend to the show because I genuinely loved her. You ain't seen me on no other daytime talk show. I still think you've been robbed. I said this. I thought that you were her heir apparent. Yeah. I really thought that the space that Wendy created, you were the person that it made the most sense. Yeah. I think that's the problem. You made too much sense and you were dangerous. Or... They thought you were dangerous, Jason. You made well, too much sense. Well, there's, there is that because if you're making... I'm not even going to talk about what I'm making because the IRS is watching, the people will be watching. <laughs> but when you're making eight figures a year from a company you started from Instagram with $100 and a website and a Love & Hip Hop co-star title... You're not supposed to be able to say, nah, I don't want that. Nah, that ain't enough. Nah, nah. I only went on one audition in my career to E! News. And when I went over there in an audition, it just didn't even feel right. I was in the room with a bunch of people that didn't look like me. Me and Tanika Ray were the only black people there. And I remember looking around, reading the script, and then having to go in the room with all these people who didn't look like me, judging me. When right across the street, I got my own company that's viral every day, and I wasn't mm. good enough. And after that, I was like, you know what? Mm -mm, I, don't, I told my people, I'm never auditioning again. So whatever's for me, call me with the budget, call me with the schedule, and if it makes sense, cool. And if not, I'll just wait on it, because it's all going to come. Mm. Now, yeah, did I get Wendy's show? No. But then what I do? It motivated me to go launch the Jason Lee show for a year, or for, for one season I got on Revolt, just so I can show I can get a syndicated show or whatever, the network show. And I did it. But the reality is, if you think about it, Hollywood Unlocked and Jason Lee has been a, ahead of the time from the beginning. We launched and built our community in the digital space, where now everybody in linear is trying to figure out how to build digital. Yep. So we're already there. We're already saturated. And now it's just a matter of scale and distribution so this year you're going to see the evolution of hollywood unlock turn into something that y'all gonna be like i can't i can't believe i can't i love y'all gonna keep saying i can't believe because you should believe you're gonna have the girls gagging all year long oh yeah of course gagging We're oh by the way gagging I, I own that trademark. His shows. Yeah, that's why i wanted to mention it because <laughs> gagging is trademarked by jason lee so we have legal rights to, to use it right Facts. Now. i love that you understand trademark law mm -hmm. because the legality of it all is where they catch us mm -hmm. we'll create renegade dances and all types of stuff and have no trademarks have no ownership and then wonder why jimmy fallon is inviting somebody else to do the dance and not the person who created it i'm a trademark snatcher baby you get into it with me you better to have yourself buttoned up because I will, I will buy it. You have trademarked some things out of pettiness that has made me cackle. Mm. Um, but now I actually want to do the political thing, right? Because uh -huh. you have become a big fish in a big pond. Yeah. Like the pond is big, you just got bigger, mm -hmm. right? And then you pivoted to politics. Yeah. Now, Jason, 
you are perfectly suited to be a supervillain in politics. And yet, you lead with your heart the entire time. So it's like it's like seeing Lex Luthor and Superman be in the same body. It's a very confusing, friend. Mm. You're simultaneously the hero and the villain. And I saw that you were posting that you were getting hate. So my first question is, what made you want to run for Stockton City Council? Because I know how much your community means to you. Yeah. You're back there like every weekend. I'm leaving tonight. I just I got back it. two days ago. Well, first of all, um, I had no intentions to become a politician, and I still refuse to accept the Jason, title politician. You are the politician. <laughs> I will become an elected leader. Elected official. An elected official, because see, a politician that comes with like, that comes with other stuff, right? It's sort of like if you call me a blogger, I refuse to accept that because to me, blogging is not what I do, and people can argue that all the time. It's but intentionally I dismissive. Can we get the camera on me real quick? Make sure that we're, we're camera switching. You guys, when you call writers, media moguls, mega media moguls with 50 M's and up, and you call us bloggers, we're not saying anything about bloggers. We're saying you're being dismissive. It's not cute. It's almost like when you say woke and we know you mean the N word. And it's not okay? a bad thing to be a blogger. It's I'm not. just saying to not, you know, Forbes just did an article on me called, and the title is Mogul Unlocked. You got to go, <laughs> you got to go read the article. And the woman that wrote it was a black journalist. And nice. that's why I support black journalism and black storytellers because we tell our stories the best. And she wrote the hell out of that story. And when I tell you, you talk about the ego death. I think my ego death rose just for one day. <laughs> He's back. I was reading that thing and sharing that thing. And it was, it's probably one of the best articles written uh, about me next to Aria Hughes from Complex, who is, uh, wrote a story about me. That was me. a great one. And she's black. Yeah. Again, we tell our stories the best. But, you know, to call me a blogger, even when they introduced me running for office, they said uh, so called, no, self called blogger, something <gasps> like that. You know? But. All it does is fill my base of people who know who I am and know what I built and watch the journey and support me and thrive for me, you know. And so, yeah, I don't I never thought politics was going to be something I wanted to get into, because when I worked at the union, the thing I hated the most was being involved in the political stuff. But mm -hmm. I understood that it was a huge part of the work that has to happen in order to transform communities. I got involved because when I launched my nonprofit, Hollywood Cares, you went to my award show, mm -hmm. the Hollywood uh, Hollywood Unlocked. Uh, in, what is the name of my worship? Hollywood Unlocked <laughs> Impact Awards this past year where we honored a bunch of people. It was gorgeous. and It was better than a lot of the other award shows. I'll stop there. It was beautiful. You know which award show I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. Jason paid his BET his tab. that's owned by a white woman <gasps> could not stand next to my award show. Oh, we're, we're just saying it? Okay, for those who watched the BET Awards this year, go watch the BET Awards again and then watch the Hollywood Un Unlocked Impact Awards and you're going to see I mean, whose checks clear. And I'm not even, there's no ego in this. this. If you really look at it, they've gotten really lazy over there. Yeah. And unfortunately, the stars just aren't shining as bright as they once did. And I love the people who do the show. And I think they're doing the best with what they got. And, you know, coming out of COVID has been really weird. And black folks don't show up and support BET the way that they should. But, but they phoned it in this year. But then again, black owned versus black targeted. Black owned. It, I am a black owned brand. Ooh. I am a black owned business. I am a black owned award show owner. That is a white owned black targeted, you know. We own the plantation and let all you niggas come over here and work for it, whatever, but none of you have stock option. Make that you know, a t-shirt, Mr. Make, Trademark, black owned versus black targeted. And I'm not being disrespectful because yeah. people are going to take my commentary as he's being attacking, he's disrespecting. No, you all wake up every day and watch a network that feeds you and your soul black content that we do need. Mm -hmm. And they're employing a lot of black folks and doing a lot of black deals, but it's not, but it's not ch closing the generational gap of wealth. In this country, I am. Yeah. This $50 million company that will turn into a billion dollar brand at some point and sell. And it may sell to a white person. I don't know. I don't know who's going to buy it yet because I don't. we don't have that many black billionaires who will invest in buying black owned brands. Shout out to Richie Lou Dennis, who has done that. But that, that's not something that's happening a lot, you know. And I think that the unfortunate part is that um, when I went back into my community, to Stockton, and started seeing like, yo, this still looks like a third world country. It's getting worse. There's nobody focusing on young people. There's no investment in the side of town that my whole family lives in. I had a home there for the th last three years years where my family lives in I paid all the bills oh I, that's the dream but they were already there but mm -hmm. it's sort of like I'm coming home and staying with them living leaving my house in LA which you've been to yes I have it's opulent <laughs> it's online you can go look for it <laughs> leaving that and going back to my hometown I would constantly be like what is happening like I want to have a lived experience where when I come to my hometown where my heart is that the lived experience is as rich as that 
in where I'm in LA or Miami or wherever else I live, they weren't coming up with any plans. So finally I said, you know what, let me go ahead and uh, because I know the power dynamic, it's a very, you know, we focus on the polit politicians and the politics over people. Let me go ahead and throw my name in the hat. I can afford to run my own campaign. I got the time. Uh, I went and got me a house. Wait a minute, went sir. Went and got me offices. You went and got a house just so you could, okay. I know it's petty, but whatever. Mm -hmm. Petty or... No, it's strategic. It's, it, it, you know, what, what do I need to do? You have to have a home here. You have to, once I found out all the requirements, I met them all, and then I, I put my name in the hat, and everybody thought it was a joke. And then everybody thought that I was playing, and everybody thought it was being petty. And then all of a sudden, they woke up one day, and there were 600 billboards all over the community. Signs, lawn signs and billboards. I mean, uh, uh, big billboards on, like, highways and stuff. And then today, as I sit here right now, there's six major billboards going up all over the, major, in the major areas of the district that I'm in, the city. Uh, and, and I've had events and I've been in there doing workshops with kids and bringing celebrities there and to, to bring more attention to what I'm doing. And yet yeah, now nobody else is competing. Wait a minute. <laughs> I mean, there, I have people right and running against me, but there's no competition. Come on. So what have your opponents, because I can't imagine, this feels like one of those ha ha Hallmark films where the small town is having an election and then this big city man shows up with his flyers. What has the reaction been from your opponents to see Jason motherfucking leave? Well, their, narr <laughs> their narrative is, because, you know, I launched my campaign doing an interview on The Breakfast Club, so I talked about That is there. so Hollywood. <laughs> well, that's where the culture lives. It is. My district is predominantly black and brown. Today, I wrote a letter to the mayor and the whole city council, the city attorneys, the city clerks and everything on behalf of the Latino community, which makes up 44 percent of the city because they have no translation at the city hall. Really? How you have no translation at city council when you have 44 percent of the social makeup of the city is Hispanic. In California, they don't have a translator? In Stockton, in L.A. they do, in wow. Miami they do, in San Francisco they do, in larger cities that are more progressive and actually care about the backbones of their communities, right. they do. So I wrote a letter today saying, this is an embarrassment. I ain't going to wait to get elected to do this. Just, just <laughs> put this on the agenda now. Are and, you not embarrassed? <laughs> and and it's, you should be embarrassed. But it's also an election season. Yeah. And my incumbent, who's the incumbent, who's my opponent, who's vice mayor, a black woman who's on there. And this other man who sits next to her, he's a white man. His name is Dan Wright. He's running for mayor. Y'all not going to pass that before you're running because the, the Mexicans and the Hispanics and the Afro-Latinos, they're all watching you now. So I put that letter out in the community today to let them know that I've asked them to immediately fill that position. And if you don't, how could you vote for people that don't support you? That poor lady has probably taken up drinking. She is probably like, what did I do to get Jason Lee on my ass? Can no. I tell you something they did? What? So I put all my signs up. Beautiful signs, by the way. They are nice. Tell you, put my face on it, too. Why did I put my face on it? Because when those older people who vote that may not know me are driving to McDonald's with their grandkids and their kids, their kids are saying, that's Jason Lee right there. Ah. Uh, oh, my is. God, Mom, you need to meet him. Parents are coming to find me because their kids are excited. Their kids are asking, when are we voting? When... Kids, black and brown kids, I need y'all to hear what I'm saying because I don't think you caught it, are now asking their families, when are we voting for Jason? When I had my toy drive, the whole basketball team, all the black basketball team up there handing out gifts to kids, these people, don't want, they didn't want to volunteer. So I've seen their eyes go from I don't want to be here on a weekend to what's next. And that is the reason why I'm running, because yeah. I realized that, you know, the title is not necessarily what gives me the power of leadership, because that just gives me more control over the budget and this and that or whatever. But it's really about, um, by the way, I get to talk about how we invest in black and brown stuff when I get up there, too. Oh, wow. You're about to have the actual receipts. It's a billion-dollar budget. Oh, God. Stockton. I'm sending y'all So, I, so, So when they ride by and they see my signs and they go, Mom, Dad, Grandma, you got to vote for him. You need to meet him. Little kid comes up to me in church. You really know NLE Chapa? I saw your interview. He probably 10 years, 11 years old. How do well, you know my NLE <laughs> Chapa? So I FaceTime NLE Chapa for him. <gasps> Jason yeah. is getting these votes. One at a time. He about to call Madonna on, on, on the main line. Like Madonna's <laughs> already aware of the campaign. She's just on tour. Jason, I done called everybody from Gloria Stefan because forty-four percent. I mean, I've called, them, I've called them all, but you know, again, it's just I use the celebrity as a creative bait to bringing people into my story, to bringing people in. I mean, my if Ronald Reagan could do it, why can't you? It's been happening since the beginning of time that people have used celebrity in order to like give attention to, to politics. But unlike Ronald Reagan, I won't push crack into the community. There's that part. Yeah. You know how I feel about Reaganomics. Yeah. Uh, I hope Nancy Reagan is staying warm. Um, 
I have strong feelings about the Reagans. Yeah. I want to ask about this, right? Because here you are, this Hollywood mogul. Oh, can I say one more thing? Sorry. Hit it. So how do they feel about me coming in? They, the narrative they've built is he's an outsider. He's a celebrity. He's the rich man trying to buy the election. So when I first came in, I said. They didn't read your book then. They didn't read they the didn't book. Read the re- they, book. Yesterday they told somebody, they called a pastor, my opponent. I haven't told nobody this one yet. Called a pastor and told him I was I support white supremacy. Wait, what? Mr. Blackly Black, Black is King. Hold on. <laughs> Black Future Brunch. Hold on. Told him that I wa- support white supremacy. So you know the three articles that I sent over for them to send to the people that they sent this to? One on Business Insider. Jason Lee calls the backlash aimed at Black Lives Matter founder Patrice Cullors a witch hunt. That's where I interviewed the founder of Black Lives Matter and talked about uh, the ecosystem of mainstream trying to uh, uplift and, uh, 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 white supremacy to put her out. People have different opinions on that, but that was my position. Mm-hmm. Then they saw a Yahoo article where I said, Jason Lee calls out racism in reality television. Viacom signed me up to destroy other black people. And that's where I call Viacom CBS a plantation. I remember that one. And it was released from my, my contract from them by that. And we've since made up and we're in a better place. Then another one where it says, Jason Lee, page six, Jason Lee quits working with Kanye West amid white lives matter shirt scandal where i said that he was gaslighting the culture and 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 uplifting white supremacy so the fact that they're playing these games when there's too many receipts to be found is comical but today i woke up and somebody took one of my signs and drew a dick going in my mouth and put faggot over it oh. but they but they misspelled faggot so what i did is <laughs> okay i don't mean to laugh yo but it's the illiteracy of it all wow you, you gotta laugh at the idiots right so i posted it on my facebook and instagram to you know millions of people and i said if you're going to vandalize my property, can you please spell properly? Because literacy is a real issue. And now people, of course, are like, it's making people want to get behind me even more. Because I'm not going to act as a politician. The Jason Lee that you see, when you, I want to go back to that comment you said earlier about who you say there's two people right now. What'd you call me? I said that you are simultaneously Lex Luthor and Superman at the same time. Superman got to get elected. <laughs> yes. Lex Luthor going to be up there. Jesus wept. Because if I give them everything right now, it may scare some people. Yes. Because I am aggressive. Mm-hmm. I am resolute when I make You're a decision. You're effective, friend. I don't play. You're effective. The Latino workers told me on what uh, mon- uh, Tuesday about the translator thinking I would make that an agenda for my campaign to get it done when I get elected. I sent the email today. I like things to happen like this. If you ever, what, hey, I bet, this is why we need to do behind the scenes, because I'm telling you, my team will tell you. So I'm a very effective person. But I also understand sometimes when you're that pushy, it turns people off. Yeah. So Superman got to take a minute. I got I to gotta move with the rhythm of this campaign. I got to stay ahead of my opponents. I'm the only one with signs up in the field, except for the one that's still in them. But now I got billboards up. And I've said, if he can climb up there and take my billboard down, I'll quit. <laughs> Jason, you can't double dare people in the middle of an election. To climb up. If you can climb your happy ass up there. To climb up to the sky (laughs) and take down my billboard, I'll quit. Okay. Friend, there's so much I want to say that I, because I'm being a host, I'm being professional, I'm not going to say it. I will say this. I think people watching this episode in particular are going to understand why our friendship makes sense and why I'm so tickled by you. Because I think because... When I get upset, I show up very much like you do, mm-hmm. right? Like, let's be effective. And you mentioned something about that when you are effective and you are ambitious and you are assertive, it can scare people, even mm-hmm. if you're doing it for the greater good. Mm-hmm. This is the segue that I wanted to make. Well, with because you. they call you arrogant. They've called me arrogant. Let's be. Is clear. it arrogant if the receipts back it up though? The, but who looks for receipts these days? Now I'm having. This is what I said the other day because somebody said, "Oh, he's arrogant." I am extremely confident because I'm very clear on where I'm going and where I want us to go. And if your inability to share in that same level of confidence in your own efforts shows up for you when you look at me as arrogance, then the miscalculations on your part. I'm not going to dumb myself down to speak at a level that they expect us all to communicate at. Grant Cardone, a billionaire who I've respected recently was put on Hollywood Unlocked, even though I respect him, because he has a clip where he said, oh, you know, I talked to the black community like on their level. And the way he communicated was as if he dumbs down his rhetoric so that way we can digest it. Yeah, I ain't doing that. I'm challenging everybody to think bigger. To rise to to meet you. To rise to meet me, rise beyond me. 
be better than me. I'm a GED holder with no college education, but I'm also a multimillionaire. And I can say that. I can... Hold on. My lips got He's down. reapplying the fence, you guys. I need you to know how product I can't, works. You know, <laughs> you, you know, I'm going to say, when does this air? This is airing next Tuesday. Can I tell you what I'm doing this Sunday? Hit it. Y'all ready for this? this I'm the, nervous. No, this is the pettiness that I'm doing. The level of pain. The level of pain. Okay, hit it. I go to meet with these pastors because I don't want to be the one, the politician that goes to church on Sunday to, to clap and praise God and then get up and talk about the campaign and then never come back. I went to church one day because I wanted to go to church and I love gospel music. This church in my community, White Rose, shout out to Pastor Bullock, Bishop Bullock. His church is a really good church that a lot of my church family left my family church where I was in the foster home with mm -hmm. the Easters and went to that church. So I know the people in there. So I wanted to go. I sat in. They wanted to put me in the front as the candidate. I said, I'm going to sit in the back. By the way, Jason, people need to know that Jason had foster parents that were in the church. So his love of church is real. It's like the pastor and first lady. Yeah. That was like a real family structure for you. Yeah, people it, was like, why does Jason love gospel so much? I'm like, because they loved on well, him. It's where I discovered religion and God yeah. and all that. But. Um, so I go to the church. They try to put me in the front as the candidate. I said, no, I'm going to sit in the kind of the middle to the back. Uh, I don't want to get up there and speak because I don't politic in the church. They called me up. I went up there and I spoke. And what I said was, I'm not a politician, so I'm not going to politic in the church. I don't believe in taking a break from the word, going into how I'm going to clean up potholes and then going right back into the spirit. That to me, that disruption to me is not respectful. So I'd rather you have an event I can come to specific for that. And then I'll talk to your people. So they did that for me. So all the pastors come. One of them kept pressing me, pressing me, pressing me on. You know, you keep talking about the youth. What about the adults? We vote. And I said, here's the deal. That's the very sentiment that keeps young people from coming to your church. Mm -hmm. And when the Angela Davises or the um, the Jesse Jacksons or the Al Sharptons die, who is going to be leading the fight for black and black folks, you know? And so I said, uh, I'll do this event. So I go to the event. He's asking me these questions. And then he goes, well, if you're going to be here, are you going to come to this event on Sunday with all the pastors and all the churches? It's a big gospel explosion for Martin Luther King. I said, yeah, I'll be there. Because I knew it was a challenge to see you really going to pull up. So I left. I got in the car. And I called Leandra Johnson. And I said, Leandra, I need you to be my date in Stockton, California on this event Jason on Sunday. Lee. So today is Friday. I'm, fly I'm driving back home to Stockton. Sunday, Leandra is flying in. She has this beautiful dress. And we're going to go to this event. And nobody knows she's coming. To stunt on all the church people. And give her that microphone. And then let them all see that the power of God that they think they have that I don't have we all have it but here's the deal I did another thing let me drop another name y'all ready so at my award show when she performed last year not last year but the year before did you come to that one yeah do you remember Jennifer Lewis took her high heels and threw them Jennifer Lewis is, is a dream yes and she's hilarious <laughs> So I called Christian Louboutin. Wait a minute. And I said, can you deliver a 39.5, 39 and a half size black patent leather shoe for Leandria so she can walk in that gospel thing with them Christian Louboutins on, the ones that Jennifer threw, and bless my hometown. They couriered those shoes over to my studio, and I will be handing them to, uh, to Miss Leandria as she walks into that thing. But the thing about All it is... All because they had you fucked up, Jason? <laughs> I'm not going to cuss when I'm on my way to the Lord. But that's my thing, right? That's my pettiness, right? Yes. And the reason why I dropped the names is important is because Christian Louboutin is a black man who is Egyptian. He's Parisian. He's from Paris, but he's, you know, he's Egyptian. You know, the other night he took me to a party where everybody in that room that didn't look like me and those that did were probably surprised I was in the room. But I was his guest and it was a party that he had sponsored. There are people who are gasping right now that you just said that he is a black man. There are people yeah. who are gasping. A gay black man. A and, gay black man. And if I, I can't wait to post later on today what he wrote in the, in the gift that he gave me. And he talks about, you know, how one of his close friends and how I shot in his life like a bullet. And he appreciates the time. Because whether we go out to dinner or whether we're being fabula fabulous or we're, we're kikiing, as we often do. I can imagine y'all kikiing. I'm inspired by him. Yeah. I'm inspired. This is black created. That is that them shoes is created by a black man. We are kings and queens. We are not the slaves that they keep teaching us that we were. And this is really all I'm really about. And so when I walk into that thing on Sunday with my head held high, my two foster sisters. With your A-list date. Uh -huh. With my two foster <laughs> sisters whose father was the greatest pastor to ever come from that Aww. community. And this gospel singer who's a Grammy award winning gospel singer. I ain't got to say nothing. 
It's very loud, friend. Yeah. Com- communication is 93% nonverbal with you. It might be 99%. Hmm. <laughs> because, you know what? The, the shade will be thrown. The shade is. <laughs> but here's the thing about the shade, though. You still sh- are showing up. Yeah. You're still showing up. You're not being a bad guy. You're just being playful while still showing up for them. But I'm also being very careful until March 5th. Yeah. Because I have to get elected. Yeah. Once March 5th is there, I'm going to still be me, but I'm going to be me louder than ever. I'm going to be more active on social media than I ever have. I'm going to be viral every day with my opinions about everybody from the president of the United States to what's happening in Israel to what's happening in Stockton or not happening to what I think uh, little, of Lil Boosie and Lil Nas X playing with God. <laughs> I'm going to be verbal because guess what? Can't unelect me now. Can't stop me now. And it's so funny because in the Hollywood Unlocked days, you'd be like, "How you gonna fire me? It's my this is my company." So they, the thing. they can't fire you. They can't unelect you. Mm-hmm. I really, you mentioned Little Nas X. A part of me really wants to see y'all converse on camera because I would show up as a PA for that. Like, I don't think he's going to want to do that because it would be the battle of, of the intelligent trolls. Because you're both. Uh, on top of your your petty game, but, and you're both nice people yeah. but who know how to play the game. No, I respect how he fought his way in and all of that, but I also feel like there is a spiritual warfare happening right now in entertainment. You look at Doja Cat. Yeah. Everybody just walked about her show the other day because she wanted to be a little devil. Then you got him now playing with God. Uh, you know, it's it's different when he did the whole the you know when he did the video where he yeah. was you know dressed as the devil, sliding out. Okay, you I get it. Shock value. And right now, most artists, you know, that lack talent have to shock the hell out of people in order to get talked about. Uh, And I get it. I get it. I get it. But there's a fine line with art and like a Madonna rolling around in a wedding dress singing like a virgin. Yeah, that was that was that was art. That was that was art art that actually at a time drove the world crazy and created conversation or, you know, Papa Don't Preach or even what was the one where uh, she burned the cross? I remember like like a prayer. Like a prayer. With Leon as the black Jesus. And burning the cross when 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 racism, you know, was like at the, the highest level of whatever at the time and that you know you know and then to be able to see her do truth or dare where she did a whole documentary on sexuality that crossed all types of lines and vogue where she she they say she took the vogue from paris is burning but i mean when she when she elevated the conversation the house of ninja yes uh-huh. they were ignoring the black art they were. that was being offered so this white woman came as a leo and she Put gasoline to it so people could see it. I love that you shouted out Leo's. This whole episode is brought to you by Leo and Taurus Energy. (laughs) We have the same birthday, me and Madonna. Really? That's our connection. That makes a lot of sense, actually. Yeah. You know who doesn't have the same birthday as y'all, but who will be getting their flowers this year? Cat Williams. Mm. Um, The Cat Williams interview obviously made me think of you, which was funny because I saw a post that you said where you were talking about your haters in Stockton, and then you referenced Cat Williams, the quote from his Shannon Sharp interview, where he said that winners are not allowed to let losers rewrite history. Um, And I thought that was the perfect quote for you to pull out because a lot of times people rewrite history for you to push a narrative. The biggest one being for me in my head with with the boys is the Beyonce thing Mm -hmm. because they tried to make it seem like Beyonce curved you when you guys actually were friendly and it Mm -hmm. wasn't like that. And there's so many things about you that are persistent and and inaccurate rumors. Mm -hmm. Have you gotten to the point now where you can laugh at all of it or does it still annoy you, the inaccuracies that float around about you? Well, well, I'll tell you, I, I became enraged recently. Like it, usually I laugh at it because I'm like, whatever. Uh, but when it comes from black people, it hurts more. But mm-hmm. I will say that I, I do have um, some thicker, I have thicker skin now than I ever have. But it did, I did get enraged recently. And I'll share this because, you know. Enraged, a that's po- a strong word, friend. In, no, driving down the street, street, screaming into my phone, things. Okay, yeah, okay, you were enraged. To the owner of Essence Magazine, to the CEO, Carolyn Wenga of Essence Magazine, they uh, two people who are close to them and myself were on a five-way phone call. I called one person and another That's person. That's a party line. They called a person. <laughs> and I was enraged. And I was screaming at the top of my lungs. And I was yelling the choice words and this and this and this. And I can't wait till I get to my phone because I'm going to this and this. And I'll tell you the story why. Because when I hosted The Breakfast Club... When I was talking about Jonathan Majors and how he was being canceled, which I thought was unfair, although I didn't like his Coretta Scott King comment, thought that that was nonsense to Leave call Coretta a white alone. woman Coretta, yeah. to call any woman Coretta, a woman whose husband's 
house was firebombed when their children slept because he was trying to create peace among cultures or spoke to millions of people about his dream that we've seen come to life with Obama, uh, a person who lost her husband because he you know, gave his life for us to be able to even sit here today and have an opportunity to have our voices heard and even matter. Exactly. You know, to, call, to call a white woman, that was just insane. You know, but anyway, uh, when I was opening the story about that, I said uh, that somebody had recently talked to Jennifer Hudson on her show, and I guess that's where you go to, oh no, sorry, back up. I was talking about that and then Jeannie Mai and the Jeezy thing, and Jeannie Mai uh, and her divorce with Jeezy, she basically used Jennifer Hudson's show to attack Jeezy, who's been giving her grace behind her back. Wow. And so I said, so I said, um, you know, go ahead, go ahead, come in, because this is going to throw me off. So I said, in opening that conversation, oh, I guess that's where you go if you want to have your voice heard. Mm -hmm. And then I said, uh, in a real off-the-cuff way, uh, Jennifer Hudson's illiterate. Oh, got it. Went viral. I mean, it went viral, viral. I was trending. People went viral, viral. A lot of the comments were, have never seen the show, don't like the show, and she is, but that was mean what you said. And it was mean how I said it, mm -hmm. and it was off the cuff, so it, what, it just came out. It was a flippant comment. Flip I mean, I, I, I still think she's a horrible talk show host. That's my opinion, right? Illiterate was probably the wrong word to use, although if you watch her, I'll leave you to have your own interpretation of her level of literacy. A little media training wouldn't hurt. I'll so, say that. No, she needs to be canceled, but a little, whatever. A little media training wouldn't but hurt. But white people in our community don't look for the best black to do it. They look for one that can pander to white yeah. and help sell products that they market to white. And just because you get a black face doesn't mean that it's culture. Mm -hmm. You know, most people will hire black faces to speak to the culture who will allow you to use their black platforms to be manipulated to serve up things to black marketed, black targeted, but not white owned brands. Mm -hmm. I can go on and on and on. Louis Vuitton, so whatever. I don't want to talk to people, whatever. So when I said it and the world reacted in the way it did, what I did wrong was I gave them another opportunity to say, look, he attacked a black woman. Yep. But I talk about black culture. I criticize our culture. I criticize pop culture. Oh, I, now I understand you want me to be more critical of the white talk shows. Well, I don't watch them, and I do criticize them, too. I criticize the fact that Whoopi Goldberg was put on suspension, but Joe Rogan was given a raise after saying nigga, 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 and she criticized uh, or said something inappropriate on The View. I've been there to defend black women. I've also been there to criticize. But anyway, what I did was I gave them something to point to. Well, what happened was Essence Social Media then put a picture of Jennifer Hudson with all her awards and says the only word to describe Jennifer Hudson is iconic or whatever. Oh, they got sassy with it. Got it. Behind the scenes, me and Essence have been building a partnership that is supposed to come out. That's big thing because they see the love I have from black women and support black women. Oh, so that was friendly fire. No. Let me, let me break it down. Behind the scenes, we've been building a relationship. They now own BeautyCon. Clearly, I know black women in beauty that haven't been over there. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if the intent is because I have a relationship with these people that they want the younger generation that I speak to to bring into essence that speaks to a different generation but still equally powerful. You know, we've been exploring this partnership. So in my mind, I know all the calls were on about this partnership, how big it's going to be and how amazing it's going to be. But then you just lifted up a black woman by tearing a black man down. So while I'm going viral for a perception that we all have talked about we know is not true and providing space to explore that, you're now gaslighting your base to build your brand at my expense. Yep. So I didn't understand that given that the owner, a man, had to step down as CEO because black women at Essence was saying that he was inappropriate with them and creating a toxic environment for them. I remember that, that was now, a scandal. Oof. Now, to him that may not be true, just like to me this may not be true, but why did you give him grace, but now you didn't give me grace? So I didn't understand that. So instead of being able to talk through it, because I felt like you all attacked me to b build you up and take a moment to take a dig at me, and it doesn't change anything, because now the Jason Lee that my audience knows would now go on the internet and burn it down. Yeah. But I've elevated, so I'm not gonna burn it down. So I went and I said, you know what? The word illiterate was probably not the best choice of words. 
although I don't like the show and I think she's a bad talk show host. And I've seen her at the vice president's house where I've walked, literally walked right by Jennifer Hudson. I didn't say hi to her, but I didn't, I wasn't mean to her. You said hi to her new boyfriend? Common, of course. Common's a, fr- Common's a friend. I'm going to tell you something right now, real quick. Y'all keep on talking about Lori Harvey. Common has been doing this since before Lori Harvey was born. Everybody talks about Lori Harvey has dated everybody in the industry. Com- Common has been doing this before Lori was even an egg and a sperm. So I really just think the double standards between Common and Lori is a little bit rich. That's just my personal feeling. And as for what happened journalistically with you, Jason, the social media manager probably got in trouble, right? Because they were trying to have a sassy moment at your expense. I just think it's poor taste for Essence to have had a partnership with you that was being built and to not have given you an opportunity to speak to the misunderstanding and turn it into a teachable moment rather than cannibalizing you for likes. Well, what I realized, yes, there was all that. And, you know, I don't know what happened with the social media person. Oh, they got in trouble. But what I said, what and, and I, to Richie's credit, Richie Liu, he's, he runs multiple companies. He's not dialed into that granular detail. And mm-hmm. one thing he was saying to me that I couldn't see in my rage, because that question was, do I still get bothered by it? The lesson that Richie gave me was, one, as CEOs and executives, we are, we are in a different level than what's happening, even if ground. it affects us. Yeah. So we have to be clear-minded at all times to be able to talk so we can understand how to fix the root of the problem that we didn't create. Mm-hmm. So Richie gave me that, and it, I, I, it was a powerful, teachable moment for somebody I do respect, right? So there was that. The other thing is that I realized that when heavy is the he- head that holds the crown, and that I do welcome criticism because I do choose to be controversial. So if I'm going to say that somebody like Jennifer Hudson, who's non-problematic, who people do love, who is a talented woman who's had tragedy happen in her life. If Isn't I, she an EGOT? An EGOT. She's an EGOT. Yeah, she's amazing. An EGOT can still be illiterate. But if I, Oop. but, 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 <laughs> stay with me. Stay with me. Jason is still Jason, no, stay y'all. With me, stay with me. Stay with me. <laughs> I, and don't forget to do the camera switching, love. I have to realize that calling her that is going to be seen as problematic because we choose who we're allowed to be abused and not. Yeah. If I called Jocelyn illiterate, they would laugh. Mm -hmm. If I called Tommy Lee illiterate, they would laugh. If I called Hazel E. illiterate, they would laugh. But don't you come talking about Jennifer Hudson. Because the issue is not... It's respectability politics. The issue is not protect black women. It's protect the ones we like right now. Protect certain black women. You know, (gasps) it's protect the black women we like today. Jason just cracked the case (laughs) about... You know what? This is why I fuck with you heavy. So the the emotional intelligence we talk about, I had to realize that. Yeah. They going to get mad based on who I'm talking about, not what I'm saying. That's true. I can say a black woman's illiterate. It just can't be the black woman they like today. We love wow. Beyonce. Do we want to hear her as a talk show host? Jason. No. Sorry. Maybe in Houston. No. No. I'm going to end this on a... on a, on a. a. <laughs> but we love her, though. Oh, no, we adore her. Yeah. I mean, we both bought tickets sitting on stage yeah. staring at her, the back of her head. But I also and, yeah. feel like... I don't want to pander to idiots by coming on every interview and saying how much I love black women. Go ask the black women that know me. Go ask the black women that love me. I don't need to defend that because if we as a culture didn't force Howard Stern to defend him sexualizing gunshot victims at a high school, I'll be damned for everything I do for the culture. That black table kind of you talk about that I set for all of us. Come and defend my affection and support of black culture to you because I say a talk show host can't talk. The best thing I did was give her more visibility. People are probably watching her show now because nobody was watching it before. She got renewed today for a third season. Congratulations to her. She continues to be able to provide a space to entertain white women in a white-owned platform using her black face doing it and speaking at a level that none of us want to see us speaking at. And I stand ten toes down on what I believe. And if they don't elect me because I believe in what I believe in, then God bless you. But I know the people in my community don't care about what a talk show host can or can't say. They care the fact that they don't have no healthy grocery stores, that they just had five people shot, one 20-year-old killed the other day in the community, that they have no clinic in our community, that there's no economic development, the parks don't have clean bathrooms that you can get in because there's chains on them, and the Mexicans can't go down and ask why there's a serial killer because you can't understand them. Why? Because you won't provide translation. That's the shit that matters. They can't even understand what Jennifer Hudson's saying because nobody's translating it for them. I will say this. 
uh, and this is not to, because you guys are always like, oh my God, you're always defending Jason because he's your friend. No, this is going to be me saying something universal. James Baldwin once said, if I love you, it's my responsibility to make you aware of what you don't see. Period. And so we do need to find a way to find a middle ground between the extremes of cu cancel culture, but also the extremes of caping for your faves, even when there's room for improvement. Like there has to be a sweet spot where we can call a thing by its name and say, hey, there's room for improvement without it being a cancelable offense. And one of the things that I found that's so interesting about you talking about the black, the, the black future brunch was you guys created a space where you allowed critique. The fact that you and Kanye West, two, the two biggest egos I've probably been in a room with at the same time, allowed a space where people were allowed to give feedback and push back. And you know what came of that? One of our attendees who worked for Essence found a way to get Kanye's number and then manipulated him into believing that she was his thought partner. Wait, what? And so she started thinking with him every day about what he should be saying or doing with Kim Kardashian. Now I'm head of media. Not a so scam artist was in the midst. Sent over this big old invoice that she thought she was gonna get paid and this title she thought she was gonna get. So you <laughs> to know be what his I, thought partner. So, and, then, and then had him telling me that I needed to listen to her. So you know what I did? I got on the phone with the attorney and all the Kanye's executive team. I said, we ain't paying her. We ain't hiring her. We don't care what she and he think about. This is not taking him in the right direction because every day there was the internet ablaze after he thought with her. When I'm sitting oh, here. Oh, so she was responsible for that fuck I'm shit. I'm not saying she was responsible. I'm mm. saying there were a, a multitude of people who were using him and his incapacity to think properly yeah. at a time where uh, a white man, Pete Davidson, was driving around Calabasas with his black kids sitting on his lap and tattooing their names on his neck, and they were using Kanye's vulnerability and the power of his platform to put more hate in the world. While I was sitting there trying to get back to the future brunch because all of us needed a voice to champion the change we all fight for every day when we write our black stories on our black owned platforms to target black people. And I'm this like, is not hearsay guys because you guys know we talk about journalistic integrity on the show. I was there when Jason got the call from Yay. I saw how Oh you were. I was I, re I remember your phone cracked. We That's were in the in the kitchen and you're like, is this Kanye West? I was like Jason, I know you like to name drop. She's like, no, this is Kanye West on the phone. And then I, I was like, oh, that is. I'm going to go to the bathroom and ask myself what the hell's going on. Mm -hmm. I watched how that evolved. You kept it a buck at all times. In fact, it was almost like you dared yourself to keep it real even more than usual mm -hmm. so that you wouldn't get glamored by Kanye. And one of the things I will say from being around you watching that was, number one, you, you're very much a Leo. You're a real one. You, mm. you, there's not enough zeros to make you lie because mm. at a certain point, you're going to have to tell the truth and I admire that. And number two, I think... Not, no, not just tell the truth. When you accept a lie and you live on a lie and you allow somebody to invest in buying your character, oh, you man. have to live with yourself. Yeah. I'm not... I, I, I need to be... A, I, I don't harbor any bad thoughts or feelings for anything I've ever done, even with the Jennifer Hudson thing, because I said it, I did it, I lived it, I learned from it, I moved on, and I'm breathing to live another day. Like, I don't live in all that. Y'all can. That's called integrity, by the way. So being incorruptible, when your value system yeah. is incorruptible, that's literally the definition of integrity. We think integrity means that you're moralistic and you always play the good guy. That's actually performative. Integrity means I'm going to be me regardless who's in the room, even if mm -hmm. it's Kanye West. The thing is, though, you pay a price for that, right? Because Ye is so used to having yes men that you and the Hollywood and lock machine saying nah, nah, left and right and keep it in a buck. It was probably drawing to his system. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I want to bring it back to the superhuman aspect of your personal life really quickly because right. I, I know that this is something that we are careful about talking about because there's lots of haters and potential suitors. Hello to you all. Um, how do you navigate city council, Jason? Uh -huh. Uh, dealing with the Yeezys and the Madonnas, Jason. Uh -huh. Hollywood Unlocked, Jason. Fenty, Businessman, Rihanna, Rihanna, Jason. Fenty Skin by Rihanna. While still, Jason, and you know this, I've been saying this since the day I met you, I want to get an invitation to your wedding. At this point, I don't care if it's a throuple, okay? Mm -hmm. I will buy presents for all three of y'all. Mm -hmm. How do you navigate dating? Because I still want to see you loved up on. You mm -hmm. know that's been my wish for you since the day we met. Mm -hmm. So how do you navigate all these things that you're traversing while still having courtship and trying to find your person? That matters, friend. You know I was going to bring it up. Well, I mean, so I was recently talking to somebody. You were. Who I liked. And I think is still an amazing person um, and is now a friend. Um, oh. But, but even though that person who I really thought was going to probably be the one. Your eyes lit up when you talked about yeah, it. Yeah. You know, I realized he wasn't. Hmm. And it's okay because my... My future and my uh, my um, 
and everything in me and everything I have to contribute to the world right now is not wrapped up in a relationship. Like I'm not looking for a relationship to complete me because I'm already complete. What will complete me even more is if I can continue to execute on the visions that I have and the, the God-given talent that I've been given and then the, 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 the dreams that I have in unlocking inspiring people. You but know. a partner can also enhance. No, I mean, the, now, now, uh-huh. as I'm now traveling a lot more, you know, you go to Miami, you're in the condo for the healthcare business because you don't have a healthcare business mm-hmm. now. Healthcare Unlocked. And then, or I'm at the house in LA or I'm in my domicile, my main residence in Stockton, my domicile. That's the thing <laughs> I learned, right? You know, like you want to share all that with people. Yeah, With absolutely. the person. You know, you want to, when you think about traveling the world, I've taken friends of mine, all over the world. I want to travel with my partner too. Mm-hmm. You know, we can take each other's reels and stuff. And, you know, and then the conversation of kids and marriage and all that is a real thing. Me and Tiffany are still really having real conversations about kids. And then there's, you know, the marriage thing. But I'm not going to fast track that process to be in the wrong situation. Yeah. Because being with me requires a lot. Patience. The, the one thing I told the last person was because that person was a very private person, meaning like not public, you know. Watch how the people you love the most and pray the most start changing. Mm-hmm. Now that they know you're talking to me, their rent that's late, they know they can come to you because they think you can come to me. You can't come to me for other people's rent. That's a healthy boundary, by the way. You don't want to be the, the purse string for their whole family. Your family can't come and stay in my home. They're your family. So if you want to have them come and visit, we can get them hotel rooms and they can come over and eat and we can hang out. But like, I'm very particular about people who even come in my home. You, you know, are. You're you my are. friend. You've not been to my home 20 times, but you've been to my home more than a lot of other people. Yeah. And, and that's, that's because I know that when you walk through that threshold, that energy you brought into my home is going to be there when you leave. And I don't want a bunch of energy. Me, my dogs, Gucci and Chanel, <laughs> don't want you to bring a lot of energy in my home. So for me to share with, so I was saying to that person, like, and then once people know that you're my person, you have to be ready for the hate because you're going to get a lot of love. But they're coming for you too. And it's every, envy too. And they're going to analyze what you're doing and not doing. And then that becomes the thing. And then if you start reacting to it, now you're playing in my playground because the digital media space is where I live. Jason Lean's Babu uh, is acting a fool at, at the Abbey. And did it like. People don't realize, and this is something that's so interesting. Council member. Council member. We're claiming it. Yes, Council honey. Council member. It, because people don't Rihanna, realize. Rihanna's husband. You, you are her husband. I feel like you, her, and Aesop are probably going to have. Wait, can I tell you a story that she's going to probably get mad? Hit it. You know, you earlier you said, when do I decide to tell stories and not tell stories? Hit it, love. Y'all don't got no lock on it. I know. Can we keep the door closed? Thanks. Go ahead. You know how you said earlier, like, when do you decide when you tell a story and I tell a story? I'm only telling the story because I'm at Blue's show and because I love Rocky as much as I love Rihanna. Rocky literally, and he's he's coming on my show soon. He already told me. Oh, I can't wait. Rocky is an amazing human being. So when you see them together, just be be very clear. They both are equal human, equally amazing human beings, and I mean that from the deepest part of my soul. I love him as a brother. I knew him before her and I love her and I love them together. I, I, I love them together more than I, I love Michelle and Barack mm-hmm. and Rihanna and Rocky. Wow. Did y'all hear that? It's Michelle and Barack and Rihanna and Rocky. Those are your new relationship Not goals. Not Beyonce and Jay-Z, not Oprah and Stedman, Barack and Michelle, Rocky and Rihanna. When wow. you know them. Okay. okay. Anyway, so I'm going to tell a story and this is something she's probably going to kill me and he's probably going to kill me, but I don't care. Because I'm promoting your brand, okay? Right. Everybody be quiet before because this is so how we're ending the episode. let me say this, mm-hmm. okay? This next story is sponsored by Fenty <laughs> Skin, okay? The lips that you want covered correctly. You are inviting me to this casting call because okay. now I need to be a Fenty girl. <laughs> so let me girl. tell you what happened. Make sure you put that in the clip. I know. So I'm on FaceTime with Rihanna. And it's Christmas or Christmas time or whatever. I don't know if it's Christmas Day. It's, it's And we're just in this most beautiful conversation about and it's so layered like it's layered and she's in a christmas outfit it looks like a christmas onesie i at christmas it definitely was a christmas outfit but it looked like a christmas onesie and we're talking and whatever and you know she's beautiful and and you know we're talking and rocky pops into the she's in the bathroom and her bathroom is it's big she he, rocky pops in the bathroom to say something to her, and he has on a matching outfit I said, I want to <laughs> screenshot this right now and put it online. And he's laughing and she's laughing. We're laughing hysterically. B- 
because I love how he loves her and how they love each other. And that that wasn't for the gram. That wasn't for, you know, he's a fashion icon and she's a fashion, a music icon. And they're iconic in their own ways. And now they're having Fenty skin together. But, you know, to be able to see that moment of them dressed alike. Was they're like, besties. Like was, they actually yeah. love each other as people, not just as uh, icons or celebrities. Like they love each other as people. You can tell yeah. that. Yeah, so I just say that. I don't even know where, where were you because I got so caught up in the one. We were talking about love. I love what happened to oh, you though. love. Because it, you just showed what you're looking for, Jason. No, but I, yeah, I do want that homie, that partner, that friendship, that all of that. You know, the things I used to be driven by before, you know, when I was drinking heavily and out there in the streets and I was a wild boy, it was all sex, 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 sex. But, you know, I have done a lot of work. I've been in therapy for over a year now. I'm sober. I'm almost five months sober. Congratulations, I'm, thank friend. Thank you. I'm focused. I'm, I know the things that are important to me that I'm not, I'm not, um, I don't want to rush into anything if it ain't that. You know, because that is there somewhere. I don't know if it's one person, two. I'm still open to polyamory, as you know. I know. But um, I'm not in a rush. This is a great lesson to all of you because there's been several conversations that I've had on air about how a lot of people are scared to date because they're like, I can't date until I'm rich. I can't date until I'm famous. I can't date until I'm a mogul, X, Y, and Z. We're literally sitting next to someone who has checked off everything on y'all's list. And he is saying that all the shiny shit aside, when you have all those things, what you want more than anything is a real partner who rides with you and who keeps you safe and who you can have adventures with. And that matters more than all the shiny stuff that everybody else tends to clap for. What I liked about the last person was they didn't care about <clears throat> how's Cardi doing today. I don't 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 ask me how Rihanna and Cardi is doing because you don't know them yeah. and they don't know you. And ask me how my cousin Tasha is doing, who's out there every day knocking on doors, telling people to vote for her cousin, or my cousin Anitra, who's running the hospital in Stockton, who's coming off of work and building out our GOTV list, or my cousin Anthony, who if you text me and ask for a sign, he gets in the car and gets it to you in 30 minutes. You know, ask me about the things in the people that matter. Not that those people don't, don't matter, but that. But based on how you talk to me, I know how you think of me. Your real life. And, and yeah. now what I will say, one thing that I've been struggling with is that people are seeing me less as Jason and more of the headline or more of the viral moment or more of the title. Councilman will be one. CEO will be one. Uh, asshole will be one. <laughs> you know, friend will be one. I, I wear all those with a badge of honor. But what I want is for... The relationships that I share, especially in that intimate space, that you see me as me and that you see me as a human. And I have to shout out Joyner Lucas. Joyner Lucas presented at my last year's award show to Tupac's sister uh, the award for culture. We honor Tupac during 50 years of hip hop because nobody was thinking about somebody who was one of the most prolific artist, but also activist yeah. for the culture. So we honored him and set Shakur came and received it. And I chose Jonah Lucas, who I believe is an amazing lyricist and icon in his own making, who who I don't feel gets enough credit to honor her. Isn't he from the Boston area? He lives in Boston. Yeah. He's invited me to Boston, by the way. Well, if you're ever in Boston, let me know. I might be there. Okay. So um, well, I always crack jokes with him because I'm like, now that you're my bestie, you know, we have to go courtside to the Celtics game wearing matching outfits. He's like, nah, pause. I'm like, <laughs> okay, whatever. But um, I went to Miami for New Year's for Cardi's thing, and I invited him to come with me. And him and his friend came, and we were there. And he walked into this restaurant, and he, he says, here, Merry Christmas. And he hands me a gift, and it's wrapped. And I'm like, what's this? So I'm like, he's an opener. I'm like, nah, I ain't go. I'll open it later. I said, he said, I'll open it. So I opened it, and I could tell it was jewelry. And, you know, Cardi's giving me a Cuban chain. That um, thing was heavy. Floyd Mayweather gave me this Hublot watch for my birthday, you know, 20000 on the wrist, nothing, it's, it's cute. You know, so I'm like, okay, it's jewelry, whatever. I, You know, it's, he's a rapper. He gave me, he said, no, open it right now. I'm like, okay, I open it. And it's a picture and a pendant of my brother who was murdered. Mm. And it was a picture that I didn't even have, which means he had to go Google and find the picture. Yeah. My brother, as we all know, if you read my book, was in the streets. He was a pyro, so that's red. It was red. Very thoughtful, very oh. intentional. And I was like, he, you're going to try to make me cry right here. That's and your real friend. So my point is, if I'm going to share an experience with you now at life where I am, yeah. if we ain't transferring that kind of energy, I don't want it. Jason, I love you. Seriously. Yeah. Like, I'm so proud. Like, I'm thinking about us four years ago having this conversation in my little walk up to downtown mm -hmm. to us now. 
and I'm just so proud of you. Like, sincerely proud of you. Is this Melissa Ford? No, no, that's a picture of me with my... You know what? <laughs> you are so messy. <laughs> you know Jason has to end on some mess. I just told this man I loved him, and he was like, is that... <laughs> that is a... <laughs> Listen, I am many layers, okay? I am going to always be me. Let me tell you the freedom that I'm experiencing right now in life. For real, I got to take my glasses off for this one. Okay, we're wrapping up. We got, we got three minutes. That's all we got left? Hell, mm -hmm. I ain't done. Okay. <laughs> you got to come back then. Let me tell you the level of freedom I'm living in right now. I wake up every day and set my schedule. That freedom alone Ugh. is something that people, if you do not understand, I can decide that if I'm having a bad day, I can get in my car with my dogs, drive to a beach, and sit there all day and do nothing. There are days I wake up and decide I don't feel like I can give the world good energy today, so I'm going to take the day off. I can go to any country in the world. I can do all those things. And, and I'm blessed because I figured out the real goal in life is to just live in and surround yourself with positive energy and people. Yeah. And I feel like we give ourselves, if you have a job right now and you have an annoying coworker, you're choosing every day to not look for another pathway to paying your bills because you feel stuck in that job, but you're really staying stuck in misery because that toxicity coming in your ear every day is being embedded into the fabric of your body. I refuse to do it now, even with my staff. You know, I don't, I'm not, if you don't, if you come to me with a problem, there better be three or four options of solutions before you even say anything to me. So now when I talk to people on the campaign trail, when they start saying this, 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 I tell them, don't come to me with a problem without a solution. Tell yeah. me what you've wanted to work. Tell me what they never tried to make work. Tell me the three things that you think we can do together to try to make it work. But if you just drop the problem, Jesus left a long time ago. He hung up there for you to lay them <laughs> things at his feet. I'm not Jesus. I'm not Superman. I'm a damn good organizer. I'm an unapologetic leader. I'm an activist in many ways. And that on March 5th, I'll be put in a position to be over that billion dollar budget so we can start saying, is this going to help black and brown people too? Jason, I feel like the audience gets why we're friends now. I think they get it. Or not. No, they get it. They'd they, they be lying at this point because yeah. you talk your shit, but you can back it up. What? The and, receipts and are there. Those are the only kind of people that I mess with, people, people whose receipts actually line up. Yeah. Um, you have to come back, Jason. I think, Anytime. I think I was doing an hour was a mistake. Yeah, we I, should, I, I know. I was late. It was, I was late. Yeah, I was going to try to give you more time, but you know, you had to get stuff I, I, done. I was a little late. You have to come back. Um, for those of you who want to follow Jason Lee, you already know where to follow him. So yeah. it feels weird. Um, he's at the only Jason Lee at Instagram. Uh, it's Hollywood Unlocked. So if you have Wi-Fi, yeah. you know what Hollywood Unlocked is. I'm going to start a Councilman Lee page just because I want to have fun over there too. Yeah, Justin, we need to talk about some about some business stuff because there's some places where I want to hop in and take part in what you're doing. Okay. Well, I mean, I asked you. you okay, we, we we talked about J it. Jason has tried to hire me <laughs> on a couple occasions, and you know, I was tricky. She's too expensive. I was for the streets, <laughs> but uh, no, I'm ready to. Now that I'm back in LA for real, for real, because yeah. my mom's doing better, and I'm actually back in LA. Working with you is on my bucket list for this year. Yeah, so this year, my I'm sitting still. <laughs> we should definitely keep talking about this year. My priorities are healthcare unlocked. You can go to hollywoodunlockedcom slash healthcare right now and look at how we're working. We're, we're going to do some amazing work to get Americans healthy because people don't understand that right now you can get health care for zero dollars. And if you're on Medicaid and you've been kicked off because Medicaid redetermination is a real thing, there's that. We're on that. Mm -hmm. So you can go to healthcare, hollywoodunlockedcom slash healthcare. Um, councilman, real thing. Real thing. And I'm telling you, on election day, when I get elected, baby, when I tell you the reason why I got to start its own page is because I'm going to be viral over there all the time, too. There's a woman right now in Congress. What's that woman's name who's going off on the Republicans about the Joe Biden inquiry? Yes. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. I'm You're not a fan? I'm, I'm tickled by everything. I'm tickled by the theater of it all. It's theater for sure. Yeah, it's all but theater. But she's learned how to get the Internet yep. to move her message. Mm -hmm. It's unfortunate that we got to do all that. But that's that's the world we Politics live in. Politics is theater, so who better than Jason Lee to get involved? You guys, this has been a very yeah, special man. episode. Powered of, by Fenty. Skin. Powered by honestly, if y'all see me in the next Fenty ad, you know it started off today. Y'all do want to think I really want to be wearing one of uh, her bras and stuff. I think I'm built for this. As soon it's gonna as be cute. she makes me an official booker of the next campaign. Let her know. Send her my reel. Well, I won't have to let her, you know, because I'll be the casting person. Oh, that's perfect. I told her I don't even want to get paid. I just want to be there with her.
Well, tell me you already found Rihanna the Rihanna is the only person that can get slave labor out of Jason Lee. I don't do anything for friends, free, or family. But I You see me for- offering, I don't even know how much it pays. The fact that I'm even offering my services, I say no to everybody. But I'll do it for Fenty. Yeah, I'll do it for Fenty too. We bonded with, uh, four years ago for our love of Rihanna. Now you actually know her and are going to get me in one of her campaigns. I love this for us. Manifestation. Uh, man, we are. You are a manifesting motherfucker. That's the first thing I told you when we met. Mm-hmm. No, no. You were trying to push witchcraft. No, manifest. You know what? That's a whole other episode. Uh, until next time, guys. <laughs> if you guys want to follow Jason, you are already probably following him. I'm at Blue Centric. You guys know we're all just human beings doing human shit. And if you want to learn more about emotional intelligence, please don't forget the emotional intelligence workshop is kicking off J- January 31st. That's OTS. That stands for Own Thy Shift, not Shift shift ots24.eventbrite.com um we only have a couple of seats left thank you guys for signing up so quickly i love you jason do you have any last words you want to yeah, say don't edit out where i asked you if this is melissa ford either oh because, no we don't edit anything because out. recently she did an interview with um uh angie angie martinez that i was actually happy to see i'm happy nice. that she's in her healing process as we all have been and, you know, we don't harbor any bad feelings. I would love for all of us to kumbaya it out one day. I want to, let tell me tell truth. you what I want to do. And this is for the Hollywood Unlocked fans. One day, I want to do a Hollywood Unlocked uncensored round table with me, you, her, Damage, and Geo. <gasps> that would break the internet. I think that would be phenomenal. That would break the internet. Yeah, maybe I'll reach out to her and see if they want to do it. Mel, Jason and I harbor no ill will. Um, we met everything we said. Uh, we, we're not sure if you meant what you said. Yeah, but she, of course she did. <laughs> Mel ain't no punk now. She's going to stand on what she says. Yeah. She, she might throw a rock and hide her hand, but, you know, I've thrown a couple rocks and ran to the car, so it's all I good. throw rocks and I stand 10 toes down. I'm not running nowhere. So anyways, I would love all of us to yeah, come Yeah, I think it could be a great healing episode. Yeah. You know? um, so, yeah. Let's She's been on it. my heart, so I would actually love to heal with her if that's possible. Okay, I'll reach out to her. This is going to be interesting. All right. You guys have to go for a nap. Bye. This was so.